Welcome to this session of WLA 2016. I am Karen Kitchens from the Wyoming State Library and today's presentation is Genealogical Resources by Elaine Hayes from the Laramie County Library System. Elaine is the Assistant Manager of Reference Services and also the Special Collections Librarian. Elaine, welcome and go ahead. Okay, thank you Karen. Today we will be doing an exploration of our, our wild genealogy resources available at GoWild.net. So that's where we're starting. This talk should take about 20 to 25 minutes. I'll be going over all the databases under genealogy in the subject areas. So we'll just click on the genealogy subject areas. I will talk about each one of these that are listed here except not my heritage because that is going away. And uh, as far as this list here, I think it's a pretty comprehensive list. Probably the only thing I might add, if I wanted to add what, something, would be um, FamilySearch.org and WorldCat, actually, because I often tell people that if they want to order genealogy books from another library, going to WorldCat and doing a search there would be a good idea. Okay, uh, first of all, Ancestry Library is in library use only. This is the library version of Ancestry.com which is the largest uh, genealogy database in the world, as far as I know. The, the difference between Ancestry Library and Ancestry.com are not, there aren't, there aren't very many of those differences. Ancestry.com that you pay for at home has a lot of personalization because you can enter your own family information. And of course, a shared database like Ancestry Library is not going to have the personalization. But the um, records, the genealogy sources are the same. News Vault includes a lot of uh, 19th century, both US and British newspapers. It seems to be heavy on the British newspaper side, but there are some US newspapers. It's really good for uh, historical research and also genealogy research if you happen to have someone living in that place at that time. ProQuest Obituaries. Uh, covers just a few, five or six large U.S. cities in the 19th and 20th centuries. ProQuest African American Heritage uh, sort of is um, accumulation of information from other ProQuest genealogy sources that have to do with African American history and genealogy. Sanborn maps are fire insurance maps for U.S. cities and towns from 1867 and 1970. And these are also very good for both history and genealogy, you know, older maps, good for home research, if you're researching your historic home, or business research, if the business has a storefront that is associated with it. Of course, Wyoming newspapers are 1920, mostly 1922 and early Wyoming newspapers more than 900,000 newspapers, and great for any Wyoming his history project and also your genealogy if you have Wyoming ancestors. We're going to start up on Ancestry Library. Okay, the search page here, uh, you'll see at the top uh, that there's a place to search at the top. There's also begin searching in the green in the, the middle. Uh, there are message boards, a learning center where you can learn more about genealogy and also how to search ancestry. Uh, charts and forms like uh, pedigree charts and family group sheets are, are available there. And, and the new collections just highlights their new collections in ancestry. So you can search there um, and begin searching or below there are search census, search vital records, military and immigration. And even down below, you could search by, you could go straight to a census year and search the census year. Okay, I'm going to just go ahead and click on begin searching. All right, I am going to search for August Haug, who is my great grandfather. And um, I'm going to put in where he lived, Kansas, and a birth year. There are more search options that you can put in down here, uh, but usually in genealogy searching, less is more, unless you have someone who has a very common name. 
uh, and then you can then you may want to you know if it's John Smith you may want to put in everything you know about them to get the right person uh, you can there are also additional ways you can search you can search by a, a another life event I put in a birth year um, but there are other life events you can search for you can search for add other family members and I think maybe I'll do that I'll add my great-grandmother's name Catherine and there this is one way to search you can also search below by state and things you know add other things here search and see what we've got okay and this is usually how the um, or always how the your results are displayed uh, on top here you have some family information these are from genealogy ch charts that people individuals have entered into uh, ancestry and then we have some census records and sort of in this er this um, category census birth marriage and death military immigration and travel in that order except um, you do have your closer matches do come first I can look at this and see that I, I by hovering over I have the oops well hover over it <laughs> and see you can look at this you can see his um, age birth year place where he lives spouse's name is Catherine we have some of the kids names down here um, see where they're living it's a uh, Nemaha County um, in Kansas and if that looks like the right person we can we can take a look at that record okay this um, I just clicked on uh, view more and you can see more of the information here you can see all of the the uh, children listed over here there are some suggested records and these are usually really good if this is the right person these are really good things that you should look at um, from here you could send this document and that means to email it to your someone else um, you can look at a printer printer friendly view of this so you can print it without uh, you know the um, you know without wasting pages and I just clicked on view to view the original document you'll see that my family I looked at uh, for is uh, highlighted also if you hover over the names it gives you the transcription of the name in case you're having a hard time reading the original handwriting uh, the categories usually pop up right here I don't see them popping up for me but maybe they will in a minute but um, uh, you can see, read the transcription of all these things the upper right hand side you, you'll see that you can save this document there are also under the tools that little um, icon that looks like a, a hammer and a wrench are your tools that you can um, print download it you know invert the colors below that you can make it larger or smaller oh there's my categories they've popped up now so you can see what the categories are at the top there's the street number house number dwelling the, the number of this census taker uh, is sort of counting the families they visited uh, the names of everyone the relationship to the head of the household whether they own their home their um, their their sex their race their age their marital status in 1920 which is this is the 1920 census they asked year of immigration whether they were naturalized or not year of naturalization uh, whether they attended school that in the past year whether they can read and write English their birthplace of that person listed if they speak a, a, a language other than English what is that language the birthplace of the person's father the birthplace their their native their father's native tongue their birthplace of the person's mother and their native tongue whether they speak English their occupation um, and, and industry they're employed and I think this says 
there's some other questions about employment there. Uh, from here, you can also go to the next page. At the um, uh, little arrow to the right will take you to the next page. And we'll go back. You could also go to the previous page. So you can go through all the census. Um, you might ask, why do you want to do that? Um, you say, we're looking at my Haug family. At the very bottom of the page, you'll see another Haug family. Uh, Haug is a kind of uh, unique name. These are likely to be some of, some of my relatives. And also, you will notice that um, they, they may have some more kids that are on the next page. So we might want to look to see if that family is, con is continued on the next page. So um, it's worthwhile to look through, browse a little bit of the neighbors to see if, if there are some more rel relatives there. Okay, so we've talked about printing, saving. Um, you can also send the document via email. And that was actually, I can go back here, right here it says send document on the page before, and that is email. You can either email it to yourself or to another person. So you can see that the, you have very valuable information in the census because um, I have an, uh, an immigration date, I know that they're naturalized, I have a naturalization date, I have birth dates of every, or ages of everyone, and I can guess at the birthdays. Uh, dates of them. I, I, can, I know where uh, parents were born and where they were born. So I can go back, you know, to previous censuses to find out where, where the uh, earlier generations might be found. And I'm just going to go back a little bit here. Like I said, look at some of the suggested resources because these are definitely other, this, this is the same guy. And there are Kansas State Census other information. You can go back to all results. And it would be worthwhile to look at the find a grave. Uh, that will actually take you out to uh, another website outside of Ancestry. There's other censuses, military information, a lot more to look at. OK. And uh, the next, next resource is News Vault. And this is a Gale product, so it'll look a little differently. News Vault has 400 years of content and over 10 million page images. If you look over here, you'll see a lot of them are British. There's uh, British Library newspapers, Financial Times. But there are, I see the 19th century US newspapers collection. You can search just one of these newspapers at a time, or you can search them all together. I am going to search. David Jones, and I put in the word obituary because David Jones is a pretty common name. And I'm basically looking for a keyword, so I'm looking to see there may be a heading in the newspaper, obituaries, or you know, you could also use the word death or uh, other keywords. So we have uh, some results here for David Jones, and I'm just look, we'll look at uh, the first Sir David Bryn Moore Jones. Take a minute for it to come up. Uh, but this is an obituary. The Right Honorable Sir David Brynmore Jones died at Minehead, Somerset on Saturday of heart failure in his 70th year. OK. You'll see up at the top, there are, are, there's a printer icon to format the page for printing. Um, the little uh, envelope is where you can email it. You can download it. There, it'll help you out, generate a citation for you. You can bookmark this page. Um, you can view the whole page. So, so you can see the whole newspaper page. Obviously, that's kind of small to read. But over here on the side, we have all the articles that are on this page. We can go back to S Sir David Bryn Moore Jones. And his article is sort of highlighted in yellow there. And, but there are some other things, other listings of deaths. I thought this was kind of interesting because that's that, uh, the fashion advertisement over on the side. <laughs> you 
Early autumn tailor suits in fine quality velour cloth. Hmm. They're kind of stylish. So yes, you can see the whole newspaper page. Uh, move around to see some of the other articles. You can do some other searches. Go to uh, previous pages in that uh, issue, which could come in handy if it tells you that the article is continued on another page. We're going to go back to the home and search Gerald Gifford. Okay, this one I can't came, came across and thought it was kind of fun. An alleged fraud upon a governess. So this is in the Morning Post, London, England, Tuesday, March 4th, 1890, and basically tells you how, what they did to defraud their poor governess. Okay, we're going to go on to uh, ProQuest obituaries. You'll see that these, um, the newspapers listed here are the Atlanta Constitution, Boston Globe, Chicago Defender, Chicago Tribune, Los Angeles Times, New York Times, and Washington Post for a time period from about the 1850s up to, I think I saw 1984, no, 1994 is the, the latest. So I'll let you search that on your own. but. Um, this would be really helpful, of course, if you are looking for obituaries in those large cities. ProQuest African American Heritage. As I mentioned before, this is um, information they've gathered from other sources, including the Afrogeneous community is, is a website of African American um, genealogy information. Um, and the other collections are from their databases such as Ancestry or Heritage Quest. And I'll let you search and discover that on your own too. Next is the Sanborn maps. Uh, these were fire insurance maps um, and they're published from 1867 up to 1970. This collection has uh, 660,000 Sanborn maps from all 50 states uh, and the District of Columbia. Uh, from this page, you can browse the maps. You can also learn about Sanborn maps or have some help with this collection. And one thing I'm going to, what I'm going to point out with the help um, are the the Sanborn legends or key, and um, you'll you'll notice that um, there, there are all these codes and, and abbreviations, and that will help you to figure out what this, this all means. Okay, let's browse the maps. Uh, this, of course, this is all 50 states, so you can be searching anywhere, but we'll, we'll start at Wyoming. Of course, this is really also very good for any history project or any uh, research on a home. I'm just going to search Cheyenne because that's where I live and that's where I'm most familiar with. And we'll select a date of 1931. Uh, you'll see it starts from 1883 up to um, about 1960. Okay, um, Cheyenne has, uh, for 1931, has 24 sheets of paper to look at. And that'd be quite a bit to look at if you were going to look at every single one of them. But you can op open up the index and open it up big and even bigger. Up at the top here, select window size for viewing. Just make it as big as it can go. And this is still unreadable, so we're going to have to make it a little bit bigger. Okay, I, what I'm looking for are two things. I'm looking for the Carnegie Public Library, which says it's on sheet 12. And I'm also looking for the location where our library is now located, which is on Pioneer, um, and it's 2200 Pioneer, so sheet 18. So I'll just write that down and go back and, and we'll look at sheet 18. Close that window, 
Another thing you can look at if you don't know the address, maybe, but you know where, where it's located, you can look at this little map. And of course, you're going to have to make it bigger, bigger again. And you can see, okay, that's where sheet 18 is, this area. 12 is right about here. But, you know, if you were looking for something, another area, you can get an idea of what sheet you need to look at. Up at the top, that's where I'm going to close the window, but you can also download a map or, or print the current view. We are going to look at uh, sheet 18, and this is where the library is currently located. Make that bigger, zoom it up a little bit so we can read it, and uh, we're going to have to go this way because the library is located between Pioneer Avenue and Tomes Avenue. Uh, in 1931, this was full of houses. You can see the outlines of the, of the houses. It, they all say D on it, which is for dwelling. You can see the, uh, on the sides the uh, house numbers. There's, it also tells you where the water pipe goes down the middle of the street. You can see that uh, there's an alley in between. You can move over this way. I'm going to move to the right and uh, the, you can see the First Presbyterian Church, which is still there on the corner of Cary and 22nd. Um, you could zoom in a little bit more. You can actually just click on it and zoom in a little bit more. Um, we have steam heat in the First Presbyterian Church. It's stone-faced. It gives you a, sort of the outline, more information about that building. And this is kind of uh, more typical for a residential area. We've got lots of dwellings, maybe some churches. Um, some of these look, appear to be uh, duplexes. They're divided into two, two homes. And this is where knowing what some, kind of the codes are comes in handy. I know WC is water closet or the bathrooms. All right, so sheet number 12. Open that up. And we were looking for the, the old Carnegie Library, which I think is right up here at the top. Let's uh, make it a little bit bigger. So there's the Carnegie Public Library. You can see the School Board Administration Building. St. Mary's Cathedral is right there. Um, down this direction is the old McCormick Junior High School. Oops. And the Mountain States Telephone <laughs> and Telegraph Building. This is a little bit hard to negotiate through Sanborn maps. But we uh, tells you a little bit about the construction. Um, it says uh, fireproof construction built in 1929, a little bit of history. It says there's going to be uh, chemicals, and they have electric lights. There's a gymnasium, exposed steel supporting beams, things like that. Just gives you a little bit of idea about the construction. We can move this way, Mountain States Building. Uh, photo down here, I assume that's a photography studio. There's apartments listed, sort of more um, downtown business area. Oh, there's a filling station up here on the corner of 19th. So all the kind of things that uh, uh, fire insurance folks are want to know about. Okay. Before, oh, TH is, um, is a fire hydrant. Um, I looked that up before. So there's a fire hydrant there, which is another thing that the, they're, they're going to know about how close you are to a fire hydrant. We're going to go on back to, to Go Wild, to Wyoming Newspapers. Now this is a, a great database brought to us by the Wyoming State Library, and you can see that it's uh, ranked as one of the best state websites for fam from Family Tree Magazine in 2015. There's over 800,000 pages of content and 340 titles. Uh, these are mostly 1922 and older newspapers because um, they're out of copyright. Uh, I think there are a few that are newer than that. You can search by city, by county, or by year, 
or by topic, by keyword. There are other ways to search. Uh, you can search including names. T keyword could be just someone's name. Oh, there are also tutorials, um, you know, other information on this first page. I'm going to search for Tom Horn. This, of course, is really great for historical research or genealogy research. In this case, I happen to know that Tom Horn was hung in Cheyenne on November 20th, 1903, and I'm kind of interested in his trial. So I'm going to look at some, something that happened that was published before November 20th, 1903. And I'm going to look in Cheyenne. Um, I can look in 1903 only. Okay. I see one at the top there that's November 1st, 1903, and one from October. Both of those are probably about his arrest and trial. So we'll take a look at that. Horn's fate hangs on woman's word. So this is um, a, a, an article talking about how Horn's alleged sweetheart is going to come and save him from the hangman, and um, which obviously didn't happen. But um, so there's a whole lot of stories about Tom Horn here, and other there's kind of neat adver old advertising advertisement and things like that to look at. Of course, again, you can download, you can print information, um, you can narrow your search if you thought you were getting too much. You can go back to your all your search results, which there were still 244 results, even though I was um, limiting it to just uh, the Cheyenne Daily Leader in 1903. So I could I could try to limit it a little bit more maybe add in another another word or something like that. Over here to the side, you can find out more information about each, each res, um, result. Or you can save, save that result. These little things up at the top, these little icons, just are ways to change the display. You know, if you would like to, to look at it a different way. Um, you'll also see that you can email your result on the upper right hand side or print it or save it. You can go back and uh, do a new search. You can also toggle between searching and browsing and you could go back and say well I just kind of want to browse for anything published at this time period in, in this particular newspaper if you want to. Or you can go back to searching. I was going to do another example. Um, this is a person named William Addison Burke. I'm going to search for that. I'm going to search for the Laramie Republican as the news, newspaper's name. Oops, I got no. I spelled William wrong. Okay, William Addison Burke in the Laramie Republican. Okay, we do have some, some, some results here. There was one from October 16th, 1918. Suppose I know that uh, he passed away in October 1918 and I'm looking for an obituary, that might be a good one to look for. And we have a whole article about the sad death of a young man who died from um, an attack of influenza in 1918 when there was an influenza epidemic nationwide, actually worldwide. So it tells all about him. And he's a native of Laramie. So it's a, it's a news and um, an obituary. And there are some other deaths that they discuss here too. So you can go back to your search results and, and keep, keep searching on other uh, interesting topics too. 
If you have, I kind of covered all of those really quickly. If you have any questions, you can uh, email me if you'd like. Um, my email is uh, ehays, E-H-A-Y-E-S, at lclsonline.org. And that stands for Laramie County Library System, lclsonline.org. So please, if you have any questions, just give me an email. Thank you, Elaine, for this great presentation. We appreciate it. Thank you, Karen.